So today we're going to be doing a furniture makeover on this dresser. Uh, we're actually going to be turning it into a TV stand for ourselves. We definitely had our work cut out for us on this one because it was grimy, it was stinky, it smelled like smoke, and you know it was just in bad condition. But it was $10, so it was worth a shot. So the first thing we did was wipe this thing down really good. Now normally we wouldn't go quite this heavy uh, with the uh, water, soap, and using, using a really harsh coarse brush on it, but this thing definitely needed it. Um, just to be able to get into all these uh, little spots around the appliques and really scrub some of that dirt and grime off. And you can kind of see in the in the corners here how it's just built up over the years and I'm not sure if some of that is you know from the, the smoke uh, kind of building up on it but it was grimy. And the next thing I do is just start taking out some of these components. I'm gonna take a lot of this middle portion out uh, and like I said, turn it into a TV stand. So um, another important thing was getting this these cardboard type layers out because that type of material is really porous. So that was holding quite a bit of the, the stink that was in there. So I figured I'd get those out and try to help with that. We just went ahead and gave the drawers a nice scrubbing down as well. And as you can kind of see here, you can see some of that grime. Now some of that's inevitably going to be the, the finish coming off as well, but some of that is the dirt that was built up on there and you could just feel how sticky and dirty it was. Uh, but we got it nice and clean afterwards. And we also had this piece sitting out in the sun for quite a few days off and on just to try to get it aired out and let the sun take some of the, uh, the smell away as well. And then here I'm just going to take out the middle piece and I'm going to take out the upper piece here where the drawers were and move the one applique piece up just to leave a little bit of detail. And I'm just going to use my vibrator cutter to get in here to these spots to take out this um, cross piece. Then I moved up to cut up top here. Um, the rest of this piece was held together by staples and this blade would have cut through staples pretty easily but I found out after cutting into this there was two screws up here um, and you know, obviously could not make it through those um, and burned out my blade. So I had to resort to using a hacksaw to get in there and actually cut those screws off. And there was no visible signs of screws being up in there. So I didn't know that I was going to be running into them, obviously. And then to get the rest of the screw out, I kind of resorted to extreme measures. Now I want to be really careful in removing this piece particularly because I want to reuse the, the applique part up top. So I want, to, I want to make sure I don't severely damage it or anything. Then I'm going to go ahead and just use the vibrating tool again and cut the rest of this cross piece out. I'm going to go ahead and remove these side pieces that I don't need anymore. And then just take care of some of these staples that are sticking out from those side pieces so I have it nice and flush. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove these blocks back here. Now these were for the drawers. Uh, but I no longer need it, so I'm going to end up putting uh, the shelf on top of these cross pieces. Now I'm going to put 
put my shelf across the front here and use that back piece as the back of the shelf. And I'm also going to put some sides in here um, to kind of make it a compartment for a TV stand. I'm going to use this uh, beadboard that I had laying around, some scraps. Um, I'm just going to turn the beadboard out so that you don't see it. It's going to be hidden by the drawers and everything. Uh, but I have to kind of measure out where these cross pieces are so I can fit the uh, smooth beadboard side in there um, as a nice little wall. And you can use a jigsaw for this, you can use a scroll saw, um, you know, whatever you have. And with this type of material, you could even cut it with a utility knife if you wanted to. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a quick sanding just to make sure they're nice and smooth. We're gonna be painting over them anyway, but um, I just wanna make sure I kinda get them nice and smooth and get any other roughness out. And we're going to dry fit them to make sure that they fit. I get it positioned where I want and I'm just going to shoot a couple nails in here. But at the top here there's not any support so going up there was some support on the inside there uh, but the top was a little bit wobbly because it didn't have support so I'm going to go ahead and just nail these blocks up here just to give it a little extra support. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side then as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and start cutting my shelves. I'm just using um, some of this old oak that I have. Uh, it's not rough cut, but it's, it's really rough because I wanted more of a, you know, rustic look to it um, on the inside to give it a nice balance. I'm going to go ahead and dry fit all the pieces just to make sure that they all fit before I glue and actually attach them. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this Bondo wood filler. Uh, you see me use this a lot, but you know, it works pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of these side cracks and the holes where the hinges were on before, some of the screw holes. And as I always say, this stuff dries really quick, so you have to be fast. Um, you know, don't mix more than you can use in a short amount of time because it only sets up in a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and give the wood for the shelves a quick sanding. Uh, just take some of the roughness off. Uh, sand the edges down, soften it up a little bit. And then I'm going to sand down this applique piece as well so it's ready for reinstallation. And then the first thing I'm going to do for the shelves is put a layer of glue down. I want to make sure it's holding, you know, really well so that we don't get any movement. Um, and then I'm going to put my boards in the way I had them arranged and I already dry fitted them so I know that they fit. I'm going to shoot um, a couple finished nails down through each one just to give it some extra hold. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a quick sanding while they're all together. Uh, just again to take some of the roughness off and kind of blend them all together. Then I'm going to go ahead and put this applique piece up top. Uh, what I'm going to do is pre-drill underneath and put a couple screws up through and I'm going to nail from each end as well just for some extra hold.
and now I'm using these pieces. Uh, these are actually from my drawer that we didn't use. I'm just putting some blocks back there so that um, I have something to nail to for the front of the middle uh, shelf here. This second shelf isn't really going to have anything to nail to. Um, it's going to kind of be out front here, so I put those blocks back there so that I can tack these these other little shelf blocks here. Um, so that it'll go through there and into those big blocks um, just to hold up this front piece here. And I'm also going to recess this shelf back a little bit just so it's, you know, not so even out front there. I'm going to attack those little shelf blocks on and then I'm going to put the cross piece in and give that a few tack nails as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the boards for the second shelf here and I'm going to install these the same way as I did the bottom shelf. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole back here with a hole saw. Um, I'm just centering it and this is going to be used to run some of the cords through. So if you, you know, take a look at any TV stand, you have the holes in the back there so you can run your wires and cords through. So I'm going to do one on the top shelf here and then I'm going to do one on the bottom. Then I'm going to go ahead and sand this top down. Um, we're going to end up staining this uh, with some SFO, some stain finishing oil. Um, but this top was really grimy, really dirty, um, so I took a, my orbital sander with some 40 grit sandpaper and started the first coat of sanding to kind of tear into it and get it um, worn down pretty good. And then I'm going to go to a 150 grit and then eventually down to a 220 and just keep working that top coat off. Now I knew for this that there, you know, this is a veneer and the underside of this was particle board. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't go too deep, especially around the edges here. You wanna make sure that you're, you know, not sanding down to that particle board because then, you know, it could really mess with your plans of uh, staining it and refinishing it. Now I'm just taking a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and just going with the grain, kind of working out some of the, the swirls from the orbital sander. Make sure that um, when you sand like this, you know, you're going with the grain. Um, and it kind of blends everything together and just gives it a nice finish. And I just use a, a damp rag and get the rest of the dust off as much as I could. And now Heather's gonna go and paint with uh, this primer first, it's Boss from Dixie Bell. Um, this is you know, supposed to be good for covering up smells and obviously you know, acting as a primer and going over something that's going to bleed. Um, so this is our first time using this product and Heather admitted she doesn't think that she kept it stirred enough. Um, so it was kind of light on the first coat. Um, but it, it did end up working well. It was just a little bit different to work with, so we didn't do that great at using it for the first time. But this was not only good to kind of take care of some of the odor, the, the smoky odor that it had, um, but also to prevent bleeding because this piece would have been a bleeder. And we found that, you know, you would have found that out when you're cleaning it. You can usually see if it's going to be a bleeder or not.
And now we're gonna go ahead and paint this in Dixie Belle, uh, their mineral paint. It's an all-in-one paint uh, in the color white cap. And we ended up doing a total of three coats on this. Um, it really needed it. It, you know, wasn't covering real well, so we had to kind of go back over and, you know, make sure we had good coverage on everything. Now if you tape off like this, it, it's better to try to remove it when the paint's still wet. Um, it tends to prevent any kind of chipping around the edge because um, if you let it dry, sometimes the paint kind of pulls up with the tape. So now we kind of messed up. Uh, we wanted to do get rid of the two other holes and just go with one pull on this. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and drill the hole for the one pull in the middle here and then we're going to go ahead and fill in the other holes and repaint the drawers. So I just went ahead and used some Bondo like I used on the side pieces earlier. Wait for that to dry, give it a quick sanding, and then we repaint them. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice distressing. Now, I went a little bit heavy with this um, for one of the main reasons that we're gonna be using this in our house with three kids. Uh, so the heavy distressing kind of covers up the damage that you know, kids and uh, pets and things will do to a piece. Um, it helps to blend in a little bit more because as that takes damage, you know, inevitably it's gonna happen. Um, a heavier distressing kind of covers that up a little bit and, you know, kind of blends in a little bit more. So I went a little bit heavier in this piece than we do on some of our pieces. And for this, I used a 150 grit sandpaper pad for my orbital sander, but it was a used pad, so it wasn't quite as, you know, powerful. And then I went back over the whole thing with a 220 grit sandpaper and just kind of hand sanded some of the spots and evened them out a little bit and got to some of the spots that I couldn't get to with the sander. And I'm gonna go and stain the top with SFO. Uh, this is Fusion Stain and Finishing Oil. It's kind of like an all-in-one oil. Um, but we kind of wanted this darker top. It's gonna blend a little bit with some of the distress marks with that dark color that's underneath. Um, and you may be asking why we're staining it the same color when it was that color to begin with. Um, but number one, it was really grimy, really dirty, and we didn't like the, the shininess of it. So that original finish um, is kind of like the real thick glossiness, and we wanted something a little bit more uh, toned down. And now for this, you apply it, you can apply it with a brush too. I prefer a rag. Um, you apply it, you wait 15 to 20 minutes, let it soak in, and then you're gonna go back and wipe off the excess. And you can apply multiple coats of this. It just kind of builds up the durability. Um, and for this, I went with three coats just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a nice durable finish. And here you can see it matched pretty well with that color. Now I'm gonna go back with this Big Mama's Butter. Uh, this is good for covering up scents. So in these side spots here, in the drawers, 
Um, we did clean them, but this Big Mama's Butter gave it a really nice smell. So any, any smell that was remaining uh, pretty much got taken care of with that. And now I'm gonna go back over with uh, the Dixie Bell Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Um, I really didn't need it on this piece because this is an all-in-one paint. It has a built-in top coat, but I wanted a little bit extra protection, uh, especially with kids in the house. So this kind of just adds a little bit of extra durability, a little bit of extra protection to it. And it adds a nice uh, finish to it as well. The matte finish, it kind of makes it feel nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the knobs on. Uh, these are D. Lawless glass knobs. We figured they would kind of add a nice look to this piece. It kind of has a French provincial look to it, so I think these decorative glass knobs really give it a nice look. So just a reminder, here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. Thanks for watching this furniture makeover video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that subscribe button before you leave. We'd love to see you stick around. And we usually release a video a week. And in the meantime, make sure you check out some of our other videos.